Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Facebook. I'm your host, Mustin Shah. We'd like to take this opportunity to send our condolences to the Imam of our time. For the past few days, we have been commemorating the tragic death of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, who was tragically and barbarically butchered on the plains of Karbala. And we have been attending Majalis and we have been giving our blood, sweat, and tears in the message of Abba Abdullah and inshallah may all your amal be accepted and inshallah all your hajat as well be accepted inshallah <coughs> but even though Ashura has gone the theme, the mood now continues as we direct ourselves towards Arba'in previously on the faith book we have been discussing Haqq al Yaqeen, the book Haqq al Yaqeen by Sayyid Shabbar we think would like to take this opportunity to now get involved with the whole of the Muharram theme and for the next few episodes concentrate on the Arba'in theme and the Arba'in commemorations and to discuss hadith from the book Kama Ziyara by Sheikh Ibn Qawlawi al Qumi Qawlawi al Qumi. Inshallah, we'll be discussing this in the next few episodes with my teacher and my guest, Sheikh Muhammad Abbas Panju. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa a'zamallah ujurana wa ujurakum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us uh, for our grief in regards to the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein. And uh, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He may increase our grief for Imam al Hussein and may he bless us with the opportunity to uphold his commemoration and his service so long as we are alive. Inshallah. Shantum. Shaykhna, before we begin discussing the book, could you go a little bit through the title and also who um, the, the author is? Uh, we, I do believe it is available in English. This is an English copy. Um, for those of you who want to uh, get your hand, get your uh, hold of uh, this book, the ISBN number is 0978147812. You can get this in English. Sheikhna, a little on the title and also the author of the book. Ahsanto, the book Kamilu Ziyarat, in essence, is uh, an important text uh, that has been authored by one of the pioneers of Tashayyu, um, the author being Sheikh Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn Kawlawai. Al Kummi, and uh, inshallah, we will have a small uh, intro into his uh, personality and uh, into his credentials. However, this book, Kamilu Ziyarat, and if you don't mind, I may just add something between the brackets, Bain al Kausain, before we go forward with uh, our discussion and this uh, uh, book for the next couple of series. The days of Muharram and the event of Ashura is not only an event that we commemorate as Shia. Ashura and Karbala is a reality that we are supposed to live. It's not only something that we are supposed to commemorate, but it's something that we are supposed to live. Awesome. Every drop of blood in our veins has to have some sort of tafa'ul, relates and upholds this memory and this commemoration and this message of Imam al Hussein. Fa, you find that this is from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, where he says, Inna liqatlil Hussein hararatan fi kulubil mu'minina la tabrudu abada. Indeed, for the killing of Imam al Hussein, there is a burning heat within the hearts of the Mu'mineen that can never be extinguished. There are two important points in regards to Istidlal, and perhaps we have mentioned this before, either in the channel or from the Manabir. When the Rasulullah mentions or states, Inna likatlil Hussein hararatan fi kulubil mu'minina la tabrudu. 
Indeed, in regards to the killing of Imam al Hussein, there is a burning heat within the hearts of the Mu'mineen that can never be extinguished. La tabrudu. You find that the Prophet goes on and stamps or endorses. Yani bitta'kid. Yani he goes on to emphasize something. Abada. At the end. Rasulullah could have said, Yani, it's enough for him to say that the Mu'min will always have this burning grief for Imam al Hussein. But you find that Rasulullah, Sayyid al Balagha, the peak of eloquence, Rasulullah, he emphasizes on this state of grief in regards to the killing of Imam al Hussein by saying, Abada, Abada, yani, always. not restricted by time for infinity. Ya Akhi, this is a statement by Rasulullah that the Shia, that the Mu'min shall be in a state of grief for infinity. Infinity includes not only this dunya, infinity includes Alam al Barzakh, infinity includes Yawmul Qiyamah, infinity includes Jannah. For the Mu'min in this Masira, in this path, in this Manhaj, of weeping for Imam al Hussein, eulogizing Imam al Hussein is a journey of eternity. Yom al Qiyamah, there will be a Majlis Aza. Yom al Qiyamah, there will be a Ma'atam. Barzakh, there is Majlis Aza and Ma'atam, and so on and so forth. Okay. This is istidlal, extracting meanings from the words of Rasulullah grammatically. What was the point of that word Abada being established? This is one reality that you are able to extract. Number two, you find that Rasulullah says, "Inna li qatlil Hussein hararatan fi qulubil mu'minina." It is the burning heat in regards to the killing of Imam al Hussein. There is a burning heat where, within who, in the hearts, in the hearts of who? The mu'minin. Mu'minin. Ya barakallah bik. Yaani. Rasulullah is saying, in other words, one of the sifat, one of the characteristics of a mu'min is that this rage and this burning heat in regards to the killing of Imam al Hussein is within the hearts. Ya'ani, so long as you have this burning heat in regards to the killing of Imam al Hussein, enter your murtabid and you are part of the mu'mineen. Because this is one of the sifat of the mu'mineen. This is w one of the manners in which a mu'min aslan is recognized from all the other signs that you have from within the Quran and the hadith. This is one of them. So, Shaykh, when it comes, in regards to the hadith that you've mentioned <coughs> and, you know, the, the, the burning uh, sensation of the heart and, and that, that anger and, and that, you know, the, that, that whole emotion. Surely this links into what we say, uh, we say in Arabic, jaza, and also the, the, the way that we lament and, and, and we, we weep and cry and grieve and mourn over Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Of course, yani the whole, see, Habibi, the issue of jaza in the regards, particularly to Imam al Hussein, from a fiqhi perspective, one thing. But on the other hand, you leave out the fiqh, for example, in addition to your kalam. Imam al Hussein is a revolution. No two people can deny this. Revolution. A revolution in every front or on every front conceivable. A revolution against oppression. A revolution against injustice. Revolution against discrimination. Revolution against corruption. Revolution against corruption within religion. Revolution against corrupt leadership in the name of in the name of Islam or in the name of religion. Imam al Hussein, Karbala represents a revolution against the nafs. Against the nafs. Every revolution that you look at, you will not find any sane person who can come and deny the fundamental role of passion behind the success of a revolution. The execution of every revolution requires people who are passionate about the revolution. You look at every revolution that has happened 
in human history, a revolution that has come to bring about massive change that has rewritten the pages of history. You find that that revolution was led by men of steel, men who were passionate about the cause which they believed in, men who were passionate about the change that they wanted to introduce through the revolution. Fayani, this is Kalam Mantiki. This is a Kalam that is logical. No sane person can deny this. And therefore, if this is applicable to revolutions, that have to do with the dunya carried out by fallible people, then what about this revolution that is eternal in its nature? One that existence, wujud aslan, has not experienced a revolution as powerful as the revolution of Imam al Hussein, led by the master of the youth of paradise. How can it be void of passion and emotion and fervor? In every aspect, just as there has to be passion and jaza in regards to the commemoration and the latam and the aza, there also has to be passion in regards to our enthusiasm in implementing the message of Imam al Hussein. Fa, you're absolutely right. The issue of jaza is uh, something that is endorsed uh, within the, uh, within the uh, revolution of Imam al Hussein. And uh, the emotion and the passion is something that is matloob, not only in the commemoration, but the manner in which the values of Imam al Hussein salam, are to be implemented. How can a person go and start to lay the foundation for eradicating social injustice when he himself is not even passionate about that subject to begin with? For, of course, you find over here this Kalam Bain al Qawsain that. Ashura and the commemoration of the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein is not restricted to 10 days or to 12 days. La, this is a revolution that the Shia lives on a daily basis. And particularly in these months of Shahrul Muharram and Shahrul Safar, where from the first day it is as if he is traveling with Imam al Hussein until he comes to Karbala and it is as if he is reliving the moments of the maktal of Imam al Hussein. And then it continues. It is as if in these days we are reliving the tragedy of Sayyidah Zainab al Kubra and the women of Ahlul Bayt. And it is as if every day we are living this tragedy, and it is every day as if we are walking the deserts with Sayyidah Zainab salam, from Kufa to Sham. As you know, these were the days. That Sayyidah Zainab al Kubra salam, together with the rest of the family of Ahlul Bayt as prisoners were traveling the deserts between Kufa to Sham. On the first of Sham, according to majority of the historians, they reached the land. On the first of Safar, they reached the land of Sham. And then we continue with this journey with Sayyidah Zainab al Kubra until the day of Arba'in and we get to Karbala al Muqaddas. For these are days in which not only the Shia, but every free soul, and this is the key word, every free soul that has liberated itself from the shackles of the dunya follows and weeps and commemorates Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. For this is just something Bain al Qawsain I wanted to uh, add to your uh, opening statement. For Salamakumullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to participate in the grief of Imam al Hussein. In regards to the book, yes. Kamilu Ziyarat, one of our classical and most reliable texts authored by one of the greatest pioneers of our faith, pioneers of Tashayyu' by the name of Sheikh Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn Kawlawayh al-Qummi. The author himself, Sheikh Ja'far ibn Kawlawayh, passed away in the year 367 AH. And from amongst his writings, one of his writings was the famous book that you held up, Kamilu Ziyarat. Kamilu Ziyarat, now you can imagine the author has died in 367 AH. Yes. Which means that properly. the textbook that you have 
in front of yourself this Kamilu Ziyarat published and printed within the markets alhamdulillah in abundance is a text that dates back almost 1100 years ago yes an important part of our heritage it is books like these that need to be preserved and need to be owned by every Shia. And this needs to be a fundamental book that makes up a part of our library. Like the way we have the Nahj, like the way we have Sahih Fasajjadiya, and we have Kitab al Kafi, for example. Kamilu Ziyarat is one of them. The likes of Kitab Sulaim bin Qais al Hilali, for example. Kamilu Ziyarat, so you can imagine that the author died in the year 367 AH. Now, let me just show you the importance of this book. Enter Janabak or when the respected viewers, when you open this book and you begin to study and you begin to learn about the issue of Imam al Hussein and the commemoration of Imam al Hussein, you find that this book, the author has passed away in 367 AH. Ghaybat al sughra ended in 329 AH. Okay. Fa, we have enough indication that the author lived during the time of Ghaybat al sughra and the early periods of Ghaybat al kubra mm -hmm. Fa, look at the importance of the time in which the author has lived. Now, this book, Kamil Ziyarat, was authored based on the requests from a number of Shia scholars at that time. Okay. You're talking when? End of Ghaybat al sughra beginning of Ghaybat al kubra Requests that were put forward to Sheikh Ibn Kawlawai al kummi to author an all-encompassing book in regards to the commemoration of the revolution of Imam al Hussein. The ziyara of Imam al Hussein, for example, weeping over Imam al Hussein, commemorating the dhikr of Imam al Hussein. And so, the first point that you are able to take is from that time, the end times of within Ghaybat al Sughra and the beginning times of Ghaybat al Kubra, one of the greatest concerns of the ulama, yani the pioneers of Tashayyu, was to put together heritage which would then be used by not only the generation of that time, but for generations to come in regards to upholding the commemoration of Imam al Hussein. Yani look at the vision of the ulama during that time of Ghaybat al-Sukhra and Kubra. Their concern was how can we keep alive the legacy of Imam al Hussein. So it is based on this that Sheikh Ibn Kawlawai came forward and authored this book, Kamil al-Ziyarat. It has about 108 sections oh, where he has compiled together a hadith in regards to the etiquette of the ziyara of Imam al Hussein, yes. the benefits of visiting Imam al Hussein, the etiquettes of weeping over Imam al Hussein, the benefits and the thawab of weeping over Imam al Hussein, the reality in regards to the commemoration of Imam al Hussein's sacrifice, how the Malaika weep for Imam al Hussein, how the Malaika visit Imam al Hussein, and similarly, we have in uh, the importance of visiting Rasulullah, the thawab of visiting the rest of the A'imma from the Ahlul Bayt. So, an all encompassing book in regards to commemorating the dhikr of Imam al Hussein. And in essence, this book, Kamilu Ziyarat, is a book in <laughs> One of the ulama, contemporary ulama, he describes Kamilu Ziyarat as a book in regards to the fiqh of the Sha'air Husseiniya. The fiqh and the jurisprudence behind the commemoration of the, the sacrifice of Imam al Hussein. For this is a book which is a book, Kitab Istidlali. You are yeah. able to extract Ahkam Shari'i. And sure. widen the parameters of the manner in which Imam al Hussein can be grieved with the passing of time. This is one in regards to the importance of the book. In regards to the author himself, the credibility of the author, you find that Ibn Kaulaway was one of those outstanding scholars who studied under other outstanding scholars. Three of these scholars. Number one, he was the student of Sheikh as saduks father. Mashallah. Yani Ibn Babawayh. 
Sheikh Ibn Babawai, the father of Sheikh Al-Saduq, <laughs> Ibn Kawlawai was his student. Number two, he was the student of Sheikh Al-Kulayni, the author, author of Ahsantum, the author of Kitab al kafi Al-Sharif. So again, Bain al Kausain, you see over here that Sheikh Al Kulaini Rahmatullah Alay was not only a pioneer of Tashayyu in that he compiled and put, not only compiled, he authored Kitab al Kafi, the first of its likes in regards to hadith, such that till today no Marja Taklid can become a Marja Taklid mm. until and unless he has mastered Kitab al Kafi. The likes of Sheikh al Kulaini, their responsibility as maraja, as ulama, was not only to preserve the heritage and the literature of Ahlul Bayt, but they had a greater door, and that was the tarbiyah of future ulama to come forward. Which is why, yani, sarahatan, when we hear these claims that Sheikh al Kulaini he was just a compiler of hadith, put together, found hadith from here and there, and put them together in one book. Yani, this is a tohma and a dhulm in regards to Sheikh al Kulaini. He nourished other fuqaha, ulama, pioneers of faith, yani, the faces of Tashayu, the likes of him, the Kaulaway. And the last or one of the others. Uh, teachers of Ibn Kaulaway before I believe we go to break Muhammad Ibn Hassan as Safar the author of the book Basairu Darajat who lived at the time of Imam Hassan al Askari and then you find that Ibn Kaulaway himself not only did he study under grand scholars such as these but he also raised other grand scholars Sheikh Al Mufid Rahmatullah Alayh was a student of Ibn Kawlaway, author of Kamil Masha Ziyarat. Allah, Masha Allah. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Uh, we're going to go to a break now, and inshallah, you can join us after the break as we'll continue to discuss, inshallah, a hadith from the book, inshallah. See you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the Faith Book, uh, where we'll be discussing Qiyamul Qiyam, Qamil Ziyara, insha'Allah. Shaykhna, can we please go through a hadith? Ahsantum. So, from the book Qamil Ziyarat, from every hadith, which is a hadith that is outstanding, hadith the way we would say, in slang, baffling. I see. Every hadith within this blessed book baffles you. And how can it not when it emanates from the words or when it emanates from the blessed Imams who are purified from every sort of najasa, purified from every sort of imperfection. Najasa is even, but they're not, doesn't even come in the picture. Ahlul Bayt purified from every sort of imperfection. Including errors. Ahsantum. For we have a hadith over here in regards to the importance of ziyara. Ziyara of Imam al Hussein. And inshallah, these are the days where our respected uh, viewers, Shias from all across the world, should be preparing for the ziyara of Imam al Hussein. Ziyara Arba'iniyya. The grand ziyara, which is the greatest human gathering to, ha to be seen. Yani the greatest gathering, human gathering on earth by all records. You have over here the narration that goes back to Abu Basir. He says, Kala sami'tu Aba Abdullah aw Aba Ja'far. I heard from. I heard this hadith either from Aba Abdullah, yani Imam al-Sadiq, 
or Imam al Baqir. So somebody might come and say straight away, stop at the Sanad. What do you mean? I either heard it from Imam Sadiq or Imam al Baqir. If you are not able to establish which Imam this hadith came from, then the hadith in itself has no credibility. You say, hold on. There is a reason why somebody like Abu Basir would attribute the hadith either to Bakir or Sadiq And there is a number of reasons. But one of the reasons that we have over here is that we even have traditions from Imam Sadiq where he would say, if you heard the hadith from me, attribute it to my father. Why? Because of the state of Taqiyya at that time, yes. where if the Bani Abbas were to know that these are the hadith that are emanating from Imam as sadiq they would uh, step up the persecution against Imam as sadiq salam. So Imam as sadiq sometimes would tell his companions, whatever you hear from me, attribute to my father, my father. Imam al-Baqir. Yes. And of course, every ilm that comes from Sadiq is from Baqir anyway, and all their yes. uh, ilm is the ilm from Rasulullah in essence. So he says, "Man ahabba ay yakun maskanahu al-janna wa ma'wahu al-janna, fala yada' ziyarat al-madlum." He says, "The one who loves that his position should be jannah, that his eternal dwelling should be in jannah." To paraphrase, then he should not leave the ziyara of the madlum. Of the oppressed Masha person. Allah. And now you find over here that the Imam is beginning to describe the characters of Imam al Hussein. He didn't say go and visit Hussein in Karbala alayhi salam directly. Mm. He said Ziyarat al Madlum, the title of the oppressed one. So straight away you understand over here that the Ziyarah visitation of the oppressed, Ya'ni. The first thing you take from this hadith is that the ziyara, your visitation of the oppressed, yani, is your stance to stand up for the oppressed imam. Your ziyara, your walk towards Karbala in itself, your walk in itself, your ziyara towards Karbala in itself, number one, is an indication of your stance against oppression and your stance in support of the oppressed. So Abu Basir asks, Waman huwa? And who is this oppressed person whose ziyara we are supposed to do? He says, Call the Imam alayhi salam. Al Hussein ibn Ali, Sahibu Karbala. Hussein ibn Ali, the one who is buried in Karbala. The Imam goes on to say, Man atahu shawkan ilayh. Number one, wa hubban li Rasulillah, wa hubban li Amir al Mu'minin, wa hubban li Fatima, akadahu Allah ala mawaid al Jannah, ya akul ma'ahum wa nas fil hisab. He says, the one who visits him, yani Imam al Hussein, shawkan ilayh, to have this shawk. Shawk, yani, this burning desire. Mm. This, uh, when, you've, when you are burning with desire and you take this initiative with so much fervor, with so much love, this initiative. Because of this burning love, it pushes you towards this initiative, That's towards nice. Imam al Hussein. I think, in, in a way, it's like you become obsessed and, and you, just, you just can't get enough. You become very enthusiastic, a lot of energy comes towards you, and <sighs> it, it becomes some sort of you know, hobby slash passion slash. You we know, didn't possession. say hobby, but mm -hmm. what we say is this love drives you towards this initiative. Shok, you cannot wait to see him. Mm -hmm. High level of anticipation and love. But the point over here is this initiative out of love. This is what we say. Wahubban li Rasulillah. Wahubban li Amirul Mu'minin. Wahubban li Fatima. So you understand from here the niya of ziyarah. The Imam says, whoever goes to visit Imam al-Hussein, out of his love for Imam, 
love for Rasulullah, love for Amir al Mu'minin, love of Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra, then what is the end result? The reward, the Imam says, is that you will be rewarded by sitting at the same sufra with Ahlul Bayt, with Imam al Hussein, Rasulullah, Amir al Mu'minin. While the people are still in a state of accountability. The people on the day of... So we understand that this is not even a reward in Jannah, ya akhi. The people are still being accounted for their actions in the dunya. This Yomul Qiyamah, which is 50,000 years long, a day, single day of Yomul Qiyamah, which is equivalent to 50,000 years, where people are going to be held accountable for every action and every deed, and they shall be drenched. And what do we know about the heat of the day of judgment? The day when a father will run away from his children, the parents will run away from the children and the spouses from each other and the brother from the brother like is mentioned in the Quran. At this time, the zawar of Imam al Hussein will be sitting in this ma'idah and this sufrah with Amir al Mu'minin and the Rasulullah himself. Oh, so, 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 I was going to say that. This really, you know, um, indicates to us and describes to us the, the reward of doing ziyarah. I mean, there are other amal, and you would know better than I, in regards to the rewards of salah, the rewards of psalm, the rewards of hajj. Do we have anything uh, in, in terms of rewarding as, as much as doing the ziyarah of, of uh, Abd al Hussein? See, the ziyarah yes, of uh, Imam al Hussein. The rewards of fasting and the rewards of Saum, see, there is an entire philosophy of rewards. And sometimes a person may get the idea, yani this is a misconception in the mind, that oh, because the rewards for this are higher, then I don't need to recite Salat, or Salat is not as important. La, Salat from the Furuuddin and something that is established, Bila Shak, but. Your validity of your salah, the validity of your salah, wilaya being a condition to the acceptability of amal, including salah, that wilaya is built through actions such as ziyara. And had it not been for this madlu, mashhadu anna ka kada kamta salat wa ataita zakat, had it not been for the sacrifice of this madlu, Sayyid al shuhada, then salat would not even exist today as an institution. The values of Salat, the values that are supposed to be nurtured within us as a result of upholding the Salah. These values are learned from the revolution and from the ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein. Salah in itself is not just the mujarrad, the actions of ruku and qiyam and sajda yes. and kunut and it has to be done on time. La, Salah has something greater in its meaning. What is supposed to be reflected in your character through ruku? This is what Imam al-Hussein stood for. And this one in itself, the philosophy of Salat and how it is actualized to the revolution of Imam al-Hussein. Ya Akhi is a series of lectures on its own. But it shows us the high rewards for actions such as these show us the importance of the action in itself. This is one thing you are able to take from this hadith. Like the way you rightly mentioned. The other thing that we are able to take from this hadith is the niyyah. What is supposed to be my niyyah for myself, for yourself and all our blessed uh, uh, yes. viewers who are going for ziyarah? Inshallah. Inshallah to Karbala or to Sham. What is supposed to be the niyyah of the za'ir? What is supposed to be your intention? The Imam points out towards the intention in this hadith. Man atahu shawkan ilayh wa hubban li Rasulullah wa li hubban li Amir al-Mu'mineen wa hubban li Fatima alayha salam. The one who comes out or performs the ziyara out of love for Rasulullah, out of love for Amir and Sayyidatin Nisa al-Alameen. This is supposed to be a fundamental part of my niyyah. When I come out of the house, 
heading towards Karbala, my, the zone in which I need to be, the mental frame, mind frame that I need to be in, it needs to be that I am embarking upon this journey out of my love for Rasulullah Amir and Sayyidatina Isa al Alameen. I am demonstrating my affiliation to Rasulullah through this ziyara. I am declaring my wilaya towards Amir al Mu'mineen through this ziyara. I am declaring my allegiance towards Sayyida Fatima al Zahra through this ziyara. When you come out for this ziyara, it is a public declaration that you are against the dhulm that happened on Sayyida Fatima al Zahra. This is an open declaration that you are responding to the call of Sayyida Fatima al Zahra that she made on the day of Saqifa on that, in that khutbah, khutbah fadakiyah in Masjid al Nabawi. And you find suddenly your entire understanding of ziyara changes. And this is understood through these hadith that are compiled or that were gathered by Ibn Kawlawi over here. So therefore, for every za'ir, we have to keep in mind that when I begin this journey and the niyyah for the ziyara does not begin when I get to Baghdad or when I get to Najaf or when I'm getting to Karbala. La, niyyah begins when I leave home. Rather, a person needs to prepare himself even before he embarks on this journey. How is it when we go for Hajj? You see, when the, when the people book their tickets to go for Hajj and they book their trips, they have seminars and they read the books to educate themselves and prepare themselves for this uh, spiritual journey of Hajj. And the same thing needs to be implemented for Ziyara. What is my niyyah when I go for Ziyara? What am I supposed to achieve from Ziyara? What are the etiquettes of Ziyara? Just like the way you have the etiquettes in Hajj, and so you just can't go in and out of the Haram the way you like and how you like in whichever manner and fashion that you like. Baba, there is Adab and there is Akhlaq and the, the Niya for every action that you perform from the Tawaf and so on and so forth. And the same is applicable to the Ziyara of Imam al Hussein. And therefore, this period in particular, as you know, um, our brothers from Basra start the walk towards uh, Karbala al Muqaddas from the first day of Safar, yes. first day of Shahr al Safar. And uh, it is important between now and then, and whenever the other groups that are leaving for Ziyara, be it from the United Kingdom or Africa or North America or anywhere, that we mentally prepare ourselves for Ziyara. What is expected from us? What our mind frame needs to be in? And it is books like Kamil Ziyara that help us. In fact, just talking about um, uh, the brothers from Basra starting on the first of Safar, there are those who walk yani, from outside of Iraq as well. If I'm not mistaken, last year we had news that we had people walk from as far as India. Mashallah. And they had taken months. They had embarked upon this journey months on in order to reach Imam al Hussein walking on their feet, showing their allegiance towards Imam al Hussein. And you find, mashaAllah, alhamdulillah, wa shukar, even a number of people from, from the West uh, who make it to Najaf al Ashraf and then embark upon this journey on the highway of heaven between Najaf and Karbala. <coughs> the route which is ma'roof and uh, you have millions of people who seek permission from Amir al-Mu'mineen after having pledged allegiance to him and they walk to Imam al Hussein, and you find that this electric atmosphere, this atmosphere of spirituality, of ishq, this atmosphere of humanity and of allegiance this is something that strengthens not only us as shia itna ashari but strengthens the entire madhab and alhamdulillah you find that many people who have gone for the ziyara of imam al hussein have come back transformed and reformed in one way or the other the people that you meet in the ziyara of imam al hussein 
in regards to the extent that they will go to in order to show their love for Imam Al Hussein Rasulullah Amir and Sayyidat Nisa Al Alameen. And you may have seen, and the Mushahideen, the viewers are witness to this, perhaps majority of them. Disabled people, people who are missing limbs, have a person who has one leg no. walking in crutches towards Karbala. Refuses to sit on the wheelchair and is insistent that he should walk on this single leg all the way to Karbala. I have people who have no legs at all. We have seen some of them literally walking on their hands. There's even a famous video of a young, young girl who was using just, she had no legs. Just using her arms like this so to go all the way from Najaf to Karbala. Ishq, Ishq. Imam al Hussein rules the hearts of the Mu'mineen. And this type of kingdom, this sort of leadership, this type of sultan cannot be removed from anybody. Imam al Hussein, you may be forced to denounce Imam al Hussein through your tongue. You may be. You may be stopped from visiting the Imam physically through your body, but no one can take the love of the Imam away from your heart. And this is what we see in Arba'in. The love within the people and the Zawar for Imam al Hussein. May Allah give all of us the opportunity to visit Imam al Hussein in the dunya, to be his servants in the dunya, and may we be blessed with his Shafa'ah in the Akhirah. Ascent Sheikh, thank you very much for this discussion and thank you to all our viewers for joining us on this episode of the Live Faith Book. Inshallah, we'll be continuing different discussions from the book, Kamilut Ziyarat, Inshallah, during this season of Arpa'in, Inshallah. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh.